Hello, are you out there? It's Mark with Reedy Wilbur, and we are going to start a Moo 2 campaign. Now, I do want it to be somewhat instructional. It's always that trick of like, do you explain every choice you're making? Yeah, for this one, I think we will. Um, it'll probably be a little bit uh, more on casual mode, a little more fun, a little more silly. But it, um, if I don't have to think too hard on what I'm doing, it'll allow me time to just elucidate everything and all the features. So this is going to be kind of an intro to play. I did a five part intro series on all the setup uh, just to get the game started, but this is going to be like actual game mechanics, how you do it. And I'll try and explain what I'm looking at and why. But I actually dreamt up a silly race last night. Uh, I, I, it literally took me an hour to go to bed because I'm just thinking of what I was going to do. And so I've been waiting all morning to play this <laughs> new game. So because this is kind of just a tutorial thing, I was thinking we would set this to, eh, what are our options? Tutor, easy, average. We'll set it to average. That'll be really easy. Huge, small, small galaxy. Average, organic rich, mineral rich. We're gonna go average on galaxy age. Players, we're gonna go to three players, three? four players. We'll make it a little crowded just to make it interesting. In a small system? No, that'll be too many. Let's go to three. Pre-warp, average, post-warp, advanced, pre-warp. Yeah, I think most of us these days like playing at pre-warp because what it means is you start with none of the technologies you need. You got to investigate them all, but it's a good starting point. So this is not the standard game I would play. Normally, I'd probably play it uh, a medium or large galaxy side, I definitely usually play it hard or impossible mode. And I'd usually be playing with, you know, five to, to eight other alien species. But yeah, tactical combat on, random events on, and Terran's attack on, except here's the real fun part, custom. So the trick is though, who do we want to play for our farmers? That's right, we're gonna make farmers today. Illyrians, Darlocks, Blurathi. They, I like the Blurathi because they do kind of look like they're wearing like overalls almost to me. This is their cool Blurathi clothing. Akari, Mechlars, the Marshan. They also have cool clothing. Cylon, Sakura, Silicoid, the Trilarians. Yeah, let's do let's do the Blurathi. Oh, oh, oh. Custom Blurathi. Here we go. So we're going to clear this. We are going to play a farming species and they're just here to make food and make as much food as possible so they're going to take farming plus seven now i was thinking of taking unification because that generates additional food but then you don't get any anything that adjusts for morale and i don't want to cut something out of the game when i'm trying to do it sort of a training thing so we're gonna we're gonna leave dictatorship as our style of government so we're gonna take the farming and we're gonna take mm, fantastic traders yeah and we want fantastic traders because races which are fantastic traders possess a keen understanding of economic and deal making they add 25 percent bonus to the profits they receive from trade treaties receive one bc per sur per surplus food instead of a half a bc in addition, they receive 100% bonus to the amount of money they receive from building trade goods. So uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that would be relevant to being farmers. <laughs> uh, it'll give us plenty of BC. It'll give us plenty of food. We do need to take a minus one pick, though, for something. How about ground combat? Everyone hates ground combat. And because that gives us one pick left, <clears throat> we'll take large homeworld. Why not? There we go. So we could have done a lot more, make it made it much more complex, but I want to keep it kind of clear uh, the effects that my little, you know, farmer species has versus everyone else's. So uh, let's jump into it here. And we are going to be enter the ruler name. Oh my gosh. Um, I think I'm going to be called um, Chut. There we go. Instead of Chuck, it's just Chut. Select a banner, green. I always choose green. Why? Why do you always choose green? Because the contrast is highest. It's highest contrast. White's pretty good as well, but white looks a little plain. So enter the star system's name. Um, let's see. 
acorn. A corn right there, except boom. So I got an idea from one of you folks that's always commenting out there on these videos to use names in alphabetical order as you expand your systems. That way it's easier to tell like what your home system is will be the A system. Then you have a beta system, a Delta system like that, or Charlie Delta, however you want to do it. So first things first, let's take a look. You know what I always do? I always save my game. Let's just save a game here real quick. We're gonna do farmers zero. I had another farmers. I'm overriding that because I don't need the other farmers. Okay. We got a couple of things we have to take care of before we hit our first turn button. So over here, we've got our year. Everyone starts at 3,500. It advances by tenths of a year. So there's not 12 months in a year. It goes from zero to nine, 10 total months in a year. We have our BC production. This is also where we can do our tax rate. So right now our tax rate is 0%. And you can go as much as 50%. We'll get into that. So currently I have 50, 50 BC in my bank and I am making 13 per decimonth, if you want to call it that. Deci month, one tenth of a year. Or a deci year, not a deci month. Deci means one tenth. Deca means 10. So a deca month or a deci year would mean the same thing in this universe. We have plus six command points and those are coming from. I don't honestly know our initial star base. And I guess you just get five as a base potentially. Let's see here. Can I click on? There you go. Five starting command points. Just everyone gets. And then one from the star base for a total of six. Food production. No surplus food. No freighters. Research. Here we go. So to start off with, we're going to have to build our first spaceships. We don't have any ability to make a spaceship yet. So we need to research Nuclear fusion, so we got to get our freighters, our nuclear bombs, our nuclear drive. We can get all of those. You see the arrows here? It shows all three. Now, normally, we can only choose one at a time. You see here, the arrow can give me anti-missile rockets or reinforced hull or fighter bays. But on these nascent technologies, the 50 tier, you get all three at once. The arrows point to everything. Same with chemistry. Here's another 50 tier. We can get extended full fuel tanks, nuclear missiles, which let's be honest, Earth already has, standard fuel cells and titanium armor, which Earth also already has. We can get all that at once. That'll allow us to make a spaceship. We don't even need electronic computers, which Earth also already has, um, but we'll get that eventually. So yeah, let's start with the freighters. Uh, in general, I like freighters as soon as possible because especially when you're making food, you can feed your little colonies that don't have so much food. You get what I'm saying. Um, did I not get to choose a, a name for my 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 race, race statistics? We're the Bullrathy. I can't edit it. Bummer. I didn't realize they wouldn't let you change the race name. That's all right. So yeah, we're going to do freighters here. Um, nuclear fusion in nine turns. So the nine RP means nine research points per per turn at deci deci year and it's going to take approximately nine turns to get it that's right it's not an exact thing you can get close sometimes you can get research a little bit early or sometimes it'll maybe be a little drug out we'll see um so now that we've done that research we're going to jump into colonies here is acorn 2. we haven't even looked at the system yet let's jump out of here let's click on acorn 2. Ah, we've got two planets. That's not a bad start. And look at, so this is Acorn 2. This is our home world. It's a large Terran. We have eight population, meaning eight billion, we'll say, and it can grow to 16 billion. So we're at half population, has abundant mineral resources, and it has a star base. But here's our Acorn 1. It's a closer planet. It is arid, medium, max 9 pop, and it is abundant. That's a very, very good planet. Now it's arid, meaning that we can... It's habitable. We can grow food there, but we can't grow as much as our Terran planet. And if you notice, our one world looks like kind of Earth-like with oceans and clouds. This one looks like a desert world, like Dune. So eventually we will inhabit that. So let's jump to the colonies tab. Here is Acorn 2, and let's jump into the colony itself. So check this out. Right now, you can see up here to the top left, we have the medium arid planet uninhabited. And here in green is our inhabited 
planet of Acorn 2. So let's look at our eight folks here. We have each farmer is currently producing four food. Normally a farmer would only produce two food, but we have plus two food on each of ours. So we're making a lot of food right off the bat. We love corn. Hey, you know what? We're farmers. So <laughs> um, here's our production. Right now our production is at three picks per producer, per industrial worker. So you can see there, if I move these off, a single industrial worker makes three mining picks. So we'll add this back in, we'll add this one back in. But at this point, we're essentially producing nine total production, but one of those gets turned into a waste product, unfortunately. So at some point we may want to, I've been told, deal with that pollution problem we have. You really need to do that. So um, if we keep adding in more people though, you'll notice this pick here, this pick with a rock behind it means 10 production, but it has two pollution. We can keep going. That gets us to 11 production. We only gained one more production, but look, we now gained two more pollution. So it becomes more and more polluting. More of our production turns into pollution as we progress. So you don't want to overdrive your production You until you make a method to reduce the pollution. And then down here, you can see we have these little research beakers. And each researcher is clearly making three research beakers. So total of nine research eight production with one waste and a total of eight food with our two farmers. Then finally up at the very top here, we have our morale is sitting at a minus two government morale because we're a dictatorship. No one likes a dictatorship. No one likes an authoritarian, but we have a plus 20 from our Marine barracks for a total of zero morale. We really want to get our morale up as time allows. This display shows the government. So I, by the way, I, I can right click on almost anything here to get a, an explanation of what it is. It's a really nice feature in the game. So if I right click on this medallion, government and morale display, this display shows the government, the current morale of the colony. First is government being a small version of the government symbol followed by a positive morale representation as smiling comedy masks or negative morale represented by frowning drama masks. Each of these represents a 10% change in the total output of the colony. That's going to be food, production and research. So you really want to get positive morale going because it'll boost everything else you're seeing here. It's a huge benefit. Finally up here, this is our BC generation. I have three coins here separated by space and then that's a stack of 10 plus three more. So 13 and three, let's click that real quick. This display shows the monetary disposition of the colony with gold coin showing one BC and stacks representing 10. BCs can be imported, exported, or used locally. These uses are displayed as follow. First, meaning over there, <laughs> comes the amount used here. We're using three. Separated by a space followed by either exports, which are bright, or by imports, which are darkened, the amount of which are calculated automatically. So we're exporting 13 BC. Let's close this. Let's hit return. And if you notice, let's hit return again. We do in fact have a plus 13 BC. That's what we're exporting to our bank right now. But if we had other colonies, we could share out the coin to those other colonies. So let's jump back in here. The one thing we haven't done is we're making trade goods. We want to make, there's not a whole lot we can do to start with. We could build housing, which would convert that production into population growth. That's not a bad thing. We could grow this colony as quickly as possible. We can also work on a colony base since we have Acorn 1 and it's an arid world. As farmers, we are going to role play that we want to inhabit habitable climates. We don't want to be on toxic planets. We want to destroy toxic planets. We don't want to be on radiated planets. If possible, we want to destroy them or mitigate the radiation once we gain the technology. We don't even want barren worlds. We want habitable worlds is our number one preference. So we really want that colony out there. If we make a colony base, it will take, it costs 200 production. It'll take 26 turns to build with our three workers. So this is a little bit of a question to start off with. Do we grow our population as quickly as possible? Not a bad idea. Here, let's double click. I'm left clicking to delete those. Let's put housing in here and let's right click. 
Yeah, that's not giving us a good example. Right click. Yeah. Oh. Right click. It's not really giving us a good number. But here, we've got housing. Let's just let's experiment. We're gonna say okay. You can see we're building housing. Now, down here, when we're on Acorn 2, this will eventually fill up with other colonies. Check this out. Acorn 2 is a large Terran, normal gravity, mineral abundant, population 8 to 16, we already talked about. But look at this. It's growing at a rate of plus 124K per turn. Let's take a worker out of here. And that number changes to 115,000. So ultimately, let's do another one. That was a difference of 9K, 9,000. Let's pull out another one. And that is a difference of 13,000. So our normal growth rate without making housing, without making homes, would be 29K, or sorry, 89K. So we're getting a pretty big boost to, to dump these in here like this. How much could we get it to? Put all of our researchers in? 146K? But that's massively wasteful. You see, we're, we're, we're wasting five production. We don't want to do that. Let's pull two of them out. Put them right into there. We could do that. Let's do that. So, Jay, we slowed down our research a bit, but we're going to have four workers making housing. That's going to get our population growth rate to 133K. That's not bad. We want to grow fast. And if you just look at the difference between like, what do we say, 89K versus 133K, that means we're, instead of advancing, a, growing a population in about 11 turns, we'll be able to do one in about seven turns, eight turns. Yeah, so let's try that. Let's hit return and let's start just, there's nothing else to do right now. So we're gonna hit turn. And you see up here, we advanced one deci year, one deck a month. <laughs> And we're gaining a little bit of money. Now we're making less BC because we, because why? Why do we, why are we making less BC? That's a great question. Hold on, cancel. Oh, because we're not making trade goods. Haha, <laughs> before we were converting all of our production into BC. It, BC are the billion credits. I like to call them galacto credits. So that's why we're not saving up quite as much money. But let's just keep going. That's two, three, four, five let's see where we're at here closing in and actually i think it shows you up here what your total is so eight billion it, it's million no no those are k those are k yeah so that's eight billion six hundred sixty five million so we're closing in let's keep going uh three more one two three that should have done it and yes, we have another farmer right there. So at this point, we want to stop fiddling around here. Um, if we pull a farmer out, we're going to be short one food. We do not want to do that. We will starve ourselves to death. But what we do want to do is start working on probably that colony base. I've fiddled around with housing for enough now. I got that extra person, but we'll get a colony base in 20 turns. And actually, let's pull off one more person. We're going to put him into research. It, this isn't an exact thing. I'm, you can fiddle with getting your technologies quicker. We got our breakthrough. We got our freighters. That allows us to transport people and food. We got our nuclear bomb, which allows us to blow people up on planets. We got our nuclear drive, which allows our ships to move in, at interstellar velocities. And the trick is, though, is we have, we're going to choose chemistry next because without the extended fuel tanks, and the standard fuel cells, we can't make our first spaceship. So we're gonna do chemistry next. Excuse me. And you can see because it's 50, it's gonna take another nine turns, no big deal. If we jump into the colony now, we've probably gained a couple new things. Freighter fleet, we can now make a freighter fleet. We're gonna to wanna to have a freighter fleet pretty soon to help feed Acorn One once we make the colony base for it. Colony base, you can make a colony base would literally be like sending an Apollo mission to the moon. You don't need interstellar travel for that. But we haven't developed any other ship technology yet because we still have to do the chemistry research. So we're still on an interstellar species, but we can't have a colony within our own solar system. 
Now, normally, if that was, say, a barren or radiated world, we would need freighter fleets first or the colony would starve. But in this case, because it's arid, our farmers will actually be very good farmers. They'll be able to make three farms per person there. It'll be awesome. So we'll get the colony base, then we'll make the freighter fleet. Let's hit OK, and let's just continue through. By the way, we can use our saved up BC. We have a reserve of 117 BC here. We can buy this colony base for... We're short 463 BC right now, but it'll go from a four times multiplier when you buy something instantly with BC. BC is just saved up production. But when a product is brand new, it's barely started, you trade your BC for production at a four to one ratio. It's extremely inefficient. But as you get closer and closer to this colony base being done, it goes to three to one and finally to two to one. So if the longer we wait, the more efficient use of our BC is, but we'll keep banking it. So let's just hit return. Let's jump through a few turns here. Oh, we have an environmentalist. Administrator Hurry offers to join you for 40 BC now and one BC turn. Do you accept? Yeah, let's take our first leader. Let's jump to the leaders tab, which is right down here. And there's, we can have up to four colony leaders and four ship's officers. So we can gain up to eight leaders as the game progresses. For right now, though, this lady, Administrator, Hur Administrator Huri, will reduce our... Well, let's find out what environmentalist is. I just left click. Administrator Huri, the environment, environmentalist, reduces the pollution level of the planet by 15%. That's really good. So we can assign her to... We could click through our various systems... But when we assign her to the ACORN system, yes, assign her, it's the entire system. So in this case, Administrator Curie, or Auri, Ow, I don't know, <laughs> we'll call her Curie, um, will administer both planets in the ACORN system. So it'll be a really good benefit. So we're going to hit return. She is now assigned here. And let's continue on. But you'll notice, though, uh, one other thing. You can right-click, right-click, left-click, left-click. I thought there was a way to get a little description of the leaders. Environmental skill? Yeah, I know that. Oh, I thought there was a way to get, like, a verbal description of their story somehow. I don't seem to be able to make that work. Okay, fine. We'll hit return. But um, we were going to advance a couple turns. So let's jump back in here. Colony base is down to 14. Let's take a look now at how much BC it would take to buy it outright. We're 152 short, so it's falling into a tighter and tighter range there. Even though we only advanced about seven turns, we went from 450 BC to 150 BC. So it's getting we'll be able to get it really soon here. Let's advance another few turns. And uh, down here, I point, I'm pointing, you can't see where I'm pointing, <laughs> right there. Look at, we're at 62% of our research done, and there's an approximately two turns till it's done. Wait, uh, let's hit turn. You notice it's still approximately two. We had a slim chance of getting it, but it didn't really advance. Now we're at 80%, let's hit turn again, breakthrough. So we got it there on the final click. Here's our extended fuel tanks nuclear missiles and you can see here it has a great description of all these technologies it, it explains very clearly what they do standard fuel cells and titanium armor now it wants us to choose the next thing we want the next thing we want is going to be it's all good for the sake of my play i usually take the lowest rps and when i've got all the lowest rps i advance to the next tier that's just kind of a simple method i've done kind of restricts so I don't chase down rabbit holes trying to get really expensive stuff before I'm ready to, to do it. So it's kind of like a discipline thing. So let's take a laser rifle, laser cannon. We'll get all those laser technologies. That's going to help our star base be more defensive. Right now, if we look at our star base, which is right here in the sky. Oh, I don't want to destroy it. No, thank you. Can I see it? Yeah. It's armed with... Weaponry, the best available scanner with the plus two scanner range and star dock capable of building ships larger than storage. Yeah. I can't really see the star base though. It doesn't show me what's on it, which is kind of a bummer. I wish it would. Oh, I'd love to be able to see what's on the star base. That's all right. 
Let's hit return. And, but we want the weapons. We'll get them in another nine turn. Let's jump back into our colony here. Nine turns. Oh, and our population grew again. We're at 10 now. So we'll keep them going there. You cannot afford to increase. Oh, look at it. 16 more BC. We'll have it one more turn. One more turn. We can buy that. We can get it early, which I like. And one more turn. There we go. Now we jump in. Let's purchase that for a total of... Do you want to spend 158 BC to buy 79 production? What is 79 times 2? 158. That's where you get that 2 to 1 ratio. That's pretty good. Yes, let's do it. And... Interestingly, we don't need any of these workers working this turn. This is just a little cheat. We can dump them all into research. <laughs> Look at it took it down nice and tight. Boom. So we've advanced the next turn. Select the colony base in Acorn system. Here we go. Acorn one. We're going to get three food per farmer because we're good farmers. We also get three Industry per worker and three research per scientist. Maintenance penalty zero because it's an arid world. There's no detrimental environmental impacts. Worker penalty zero percent because it's not a low gravity or high gravity world. It's a normal gravity world. So it's perfect for us. Max population nine. Yeah, this is a really good planet. We're lucky that this was in our starting system. Here we are, colony built on Acorn Prime. All right. And... You could see here, we're only producing two food. Why? Because we have two sad faces. Our morale is at a minus 20% because we're dictatorship. Eh, no one likes that. <laughs> Here's what we need though. Things have changed. We want to build, first of all, our marine barracks. Building that marine barracks will get rid of that minus 20% morale bonus. It's a huge tax on that colony. So although it'll cost a maintenance of one BC a turn, we will start building it right away before anything else. We've gained some other capabilities, though. Remember, we could build the freighter fleet, we could build the spy, but now we can build scouts, fangs, and wolverines. Well, scout ships, destroyers, and cruisers, I think it is. Yeah, then battleships, D yeah, corvettes, scouts, frigates, corvettes, cruisers, battleships. <laughs> We'll sort it out as we get to it. We're probably not going to get that today, though. I'm going to keep these episodes to about 30 minutes. And we also have the ability to make a star base, but we're going to get that marine barracks done first. So we hit OK. Now, unfortunately, we have no production going here. We're going to have to move people across as time allows. But for the time being, they are growing at a rate of plus 42K. So in about 22 turns, we'll gain a population here. That's really slow, but it is what it is. I'll hit done. You can see here, here's a turn summary. We finally got one. Acorn 2 finished the colony, construction of the colony base. It's going to automatically take us back to Acorn 2 because it's saying, hey, you finished building a colony base, place your orders for future production. Well, that makes sense. So first of all, let's grab some of our research people, dump them back into here. Hurry here, Auri, is helping with our pollution. She's reducing our overall pollution by 15%, which I don't know if that's on your total production, 15% of your total production, 15% minus, or if it's 15% of the pollution. So it may not come into effect unless we had, say, yeah, that's probably what it is. I just dumped everyone in production. If you remember before, we had like five people made five barrels of pollution approximately. If you were to rewind, now with seven builders, we only have five barrels. That's because Huri. She's helping to reduce a couple of barrels overall. But again, we don't need that much mad production. Let's move these three back into here. Let's change this up with a freighter fleet. Why? Once we have this freighter fleet, this will build five freighters at a time, by the way. We'll have it in six turns. We're going to hit OK. Once we do that, we can use our surplus food in our five freighters, which we don't have yet, and feed Acorn 2, which will allow us to move the farmer on Acorn 2 to production to get that farmer making that marine barracks. We're going to get our colony going. Also, if we have five free freighters at a time, we can transport a population from Acorn 2 to Acorn 1 bit by bit. 
ultimately, though, we don't want to f focus on Acorn one too much since it's our new colony. We want to focus on our main home world. So we, we really do want to grow our population there as quickly as possible. So we got that freighter fleet coming, marine barracks eventually. Let's hit return and let's hit turn, turn, turn. Can we buy our freighter fleet yet? Yeah. Let's buy it right there for 40 production. Let's move all these fellows over here to research. Hit turn. Completed the freighter fleet. And what do we want to build next? We're going to have to get on our scouting here. We got to get scouting pretty soon. Let's build our first scout. So we're going to do a quick, you know what? <laughs> next episode. Next episode, we are going to design uh, our first ship get it built it'll it'll be a small ship it, it'll it'll take probably billy will build it in four or five turns honestly it, so it'll be quick but um i'm gonna hit uh okay for now i'm gonna leave this empty so to remind me where we left off i'm gonna hit return and the last thing i'll do is because we have three extra food and we have five freighters i'm gonna jump into our colony here I got to sneeze. And we're going to move this farmer over to here. He'll make that marine barracks in 30 turns. Yeah, something to do. Fine. We're going to move our builders back over to here. We're going to take them up. We'll leave them on trade goods. Okay, so this is where we're going to leave the status of the, the game. We'll come back in. We'll design that ship on our next session. That guy's working on the marine barracks. And if I jump into Acorn real quick, you can see down here actually, but I'll show you this. He has one corn on the cob, our precious, precious corns. It's grayed out because it's being imported from our main colony. But it allows him to do two mining. It should be three, three production, but again, the morale is holding him back. So that is where we're going to leave it, folks. Whew. I'm explaining a lot. Obviously, the game plays much faster when you're not talking about every detail. But that's the end of our gameplay tutorial one and we'll probably take this through, maybe hopefully do a win. And uh, maybe that'll take 10, 15 episodes. I don't know. Something to do. If you watch, thank you so much. Take care, folks.